Okay, today I'm going to talk about um, uh, arguments. I'm going to talk about deduction and induction and the t different types of arguments uh, because it's absolutely necessary to have a basic understanding of arguments. Okay, so let me first of all explain the difference between induction and deduction. Inductive arguments and deductive arguments. So there are basically arguments come in two forms, inductive and deductive. Okay, inductive and deductive arguments. The main difference between the two are have to do with the degree of certainty with that you claim for the conclusion. So the degree of certainty that you claim for the conclusion of the argument. In deductive arguments, if the premises are true, the conclusion is 100%, the claim at least, is that the conclusion will be absolutely certain, 100% certainty. Inductive arguments at best, the best you're going to get from an inductive argument is that the conclusion is probably true. You'll never get the to 100% certainty. So let me give you an example of a simple, a very simple deductive argument. The, first, the premise will be this, it is a circle, okay? One premise, it is a circle. And I from that, I'm going to conclude something. What do I know? The conclusion, I will say it as it is round, okay? So this is an argument. It's an argument because we have a, a premise and a conclusion. The premise is a reason to believe that the conclusion is true. The premise is, if I give the numbers, I'll say statement one is it is a circle. Therefore, it is round, two. A premise and a conclusion. If the premise is true, the conclusion has to be true true. If it is a circle, it has to be round. And I know that I, I wouldn't say it is a circle and the and it's probably round, right? It's not. It's I know with absolute certainty, 100% certainty that it's round. If it's a, a circle, it's round. So what I, the conclusion before the conclusion, I, I could use the word necessarily. It's necessarily round, meaning it has with I, I'm, I'm talking about 100 percent certainty 100 percent certainty okay if i was going to so that's that's a deductive argument that's a very simple deductive argument in every deductive argument if the if the premises are true the conclusion if it's a valid argument deductive arguments are valid or invalid valid or invalid a val in a valid deductive argument, if the premises are true, so the big word is if, if the premises are true, the conclusion has to be true with 100% certainty. The big word, the key is if, if it's true, the conclusion has to be true. If I concluded, if I said it's a circle, therefore it has three sides, well, that would be a very bad argument. It would be invalid because this this doesn't follow from this. It, circles do not have three sides. Deductive arguments can be valid or invalid. In a, in a valid deductive argument, if the premises are true, the conclusion has to be true with 100% certainty. The inductive arguments, the best you're going to get with an inductive argument is that the conclusion is probably true. So let's say um, uh, I listen to the weather report. The weather report says it's going to rain. So the premise will be weather report says it's going to rain tonight. I won't write the whole thing out. I'll just put weather report says it's going to rain tonight. Therefore my conclusion will be it will rain tonight. It will rain 
right? Now that's a if the weather report says it's going to rain tonight, it it probably will rain. If it says like there's an eighty percent chance that it's going to rain, it, it probably will rain. So the it, so the best I can say it probably will rain. I I can't say it's going to rain with hundred percent certainty because no one knows that. Inductive arguments, the best you're going to get is probably. Deductive arguments, the conclusion, the, the conclusion, you, 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 before the conclusion, you don't say probably, you say necessarily. So that's the big difference between inductive and deductive arguments. Um, in philosophy, philosophical arguments are almost all uh, deductive arguments. Science deals with induction and deduction, but philosophical arguments are, it, when, when they do argue, uh, it's almost always uh, deductive. The only inductive arguments in philosophy, I think, would be uh, uh, arguments from analogy. Arguments from analogy are not, are not deductive. The best you're going to get is probably, but just about every, all the arguments that you find in philosophy are deductive arguments. Um, let me get, uh, go over a couple, for deductive arguments, let me uh, give you, uh, there's a, a couple forms that you really need to know when you're talking about deductive arguments. And I'll write and I'll explain it. So let's, one of the forms is this. One of the forms is this. If P, then Q. If P, then Q, P, Q. P and Q stand for statements. So I could make in, in, any argument that has this form, if P then Q, P is true. Therefore, the conclusion is down here below the line. These are the premises. The conclusion, if this premise is true and that premise is true, then that has to be true with 100% certainty. It doesn't matter what sentences or statements I, play, I substitute in for the letters. These letters are called statement letters because they stand for statements. So statement letters, they stand for statements. So let's say I say, if it is a cat. So P in this case is gonna stand for it is a cat and Q will be it is an animal. Okay, that's true. That statement is true. P is it, it is a cat. So I have two premises. If it is a cat, then it is an animal. First premise. Second premise. It is a cat. Well, if you think about it for a second, just stop and think about it for a second. From these two premises, something follows necessarily. If this is true and that's true, this has to be true. It has to be an animal. If P, then Q, P, Q. That's a, any argument that has that form is a valid argument. It's a valid argument. Doesn't matter what you substitute for P and Q. I could say if this, this one is actually the, the, the conclusion actually. If the premises are true, and in this case, let's say I really am looking at a cat. Okay, so let's say that's true. And this one is definitely true. If it's a cat, then it's an animal. Let's say I'm, I'm looking at a cat. So they're both true, then this will be true. If that is the case, then you would say this argument is sound. It's a sound deductive argument because it passes two tests. It's valid, that's the first test, and it has true premises. Sound arguments are valid and have true premises. An unsound argument though, can be valid and but it's not going to be sound if the premises, one of the premises is false. So let's say I, I'll change the argument. Let's, I will say if it's a cat, then it is a musician. Okay. Now that's not true. That's false. And let's say I'm looking at a cat. It is a cat. That's true. This is the first one is false. The second one is true. If it's a cat, then it's a musician. False. If it's, let's say it is a cat, true. From this argument, this premise says if it's a cat, then it's a musician. It's a cat. There, what follows is Q. It's a musician. Now you might say that's crazy. Well, it is crazy. 
But the argument is valid. It's a valid argument. Validity has nothing to do with whether the premises are true or the conclusion is true. Validity simply has to do with what follows from what. These, this statement here, this conclusion, follows logically from these two premises. This argument is valid, but it's unsound. And it's unsound because this premise is false. Okay? That's an unsound argument. So deductive arguments can be sound or unsound. One way in which they are unsound is if one of the premises is false. Um, they can also be unsound in another way if if the um, the premises could be true, but let's say the 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 logic is no good. So I'll give you an example. Let's say you have you're arguing this. If P then Q, Q. Well, I'll put the Q over here. Q, therefore P. Any argument that has this form is invalid. So let's take, say, P is it is a cat. Q is it's, it is an animal. Okay, now we have the argument is this. If it's a cat, then it's an animal. True. It's an animal. Let's say I'm looking at a, at a, at a dog, okay? I'm looking at a dog. If it's a cat, then it's an animal. True. It's not a cat. It's a dog. But if it is a cat, then it's an animal. True. Oh, well, actually, I shouldn't. No, forget, forget the dog. I'm looking at a cat. So, no, yeah, I'm looking at a dog. Okay. If it's a cat, then it's an animal. True. I'm looking at a dog. It is an animal. True. Dogs are animals. Therefore, P, it's a cat. False. I'm looking at a dog. It doesn't matter what statements you substitute for P and Q. Any argument that has this form, if P then Q, Q, P, is an invalid argument. Now, in this case, um, I had, both of my premises were true. I was looking at a dog. I said, if it's a cat, then it's an animal. True. It's an animal that was true, but I ended up with a false conclusion. It's a cat because it wasn't a cat, it was a dog. So that's an invalid argument. So when you analyze arguments, um, if they're de deductive arguments, you have to, you know, really look at the, at, 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 if it is, you ask yourself this question, is it possible for the premises to be true and the conclusion to be false. If it is possible, then it's an invalid argument. Here's an, an example. I'll give you an argument. Let's say my first premise is this. I've let go of this pen one million times. Okay? Every time I let go of it, it falls. My conclusion is that the next time I let go of it, it will fall. So my argument, the premise is I've let go of it a million times. It's fallen every time. The next time I let go of it, it's going to fall. Is that a, is that a, a, a valid argument? A deductive argument and uh, the answer is no because the fact that I've let go of it I can imagine a situation in which the premise is true and the conclusion is false I let go of it 1 million times true but I can imagine the next time I let go of this pen it doesn't fall it just stays suspended in space or it flies off or whatever just disappears I can imagine it. it's logically possible. So that argument would be, if, it, if I claimed it was uh, a deductive argument, if I'm making it as a deductive argument, it would be invalid. Um, usually most people would call it an inductive argument, but if I did make, you know, claim that it, it's a deductive argument, then it would be valid because I can imagine a situation in which the premises are true and the conclusion is false. Uh, I'll do another, another video because of my 15 minutes are up. I have to come back and do, I'll do another one. But so that's all for now. And I'll, I'll do another one. Okay. Let's see.